Hi, welcome back to the shed for part two of my great guitar build of 2020 SG Junior build. If you missed the first part, there'll be a link up there somewhere to that. In the first part, I made a set of templates and prepared the timber for the build. In this part, I'm gonna crack on and get the body sorted. So come and join me down on the bench. So following on from part one, I've got the, the glued up neck blank here. I'm looking at this, I think I might actually be able to squeeze two necks out of this. I'll have to do some measuring and see. It'd be nice if I could. But I'm going to put that to one side now and I'm going to work on that today. Because what we have here is the body blank. As you can see, three bits of Sapili glued together. So they are pretty straight. Get a rule on there. They're not perfectly level, but they're, they're not too bad at all. So I'm going to quickly run a plane over this, both sides, get it flattened off, clean it up a little bit, and then we can start to make it look a little bit more like a guitar body. Okay, that's, I think that's good enough. It's pretty flat. So, next step is just have a look. And just make sure that I put my center line so that I can get as much of this damage as possible where it's not gonna show. Right, there's my center line. We need to now find some way of attaching the template. We'll draw the outline on and we'll get it cut out. Now I could attach this in a number of ways, um, double-sided tape, etc. In the first instance, I'm going to just put a couple of screws through, one into the pickup cavity and one into the neck pocket. The reason I'm going to do it that way is so that if I need to take it off and put it back on again in the same position a number of times, the screw holes will locate it. You're less likely to be able to do that if you're using double-sided tape or another method like that. Right, with that done, we can just draw around it and get it to the bandsaw. Right, so there it is, um, roughly to shape. I've decided I'm not going to wrap the perimeter. Um, time's tight, it looks a nice shape. Um, once I've put the bevels into this, there's not gonna be that much of the edge left really to, to sand to shape. So I'll just go with it as it is. Um, it's a real shame that there's this damage to it because that looks quite pretty, doesn't it? Oh well, can't be helped. So, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle some of this damage. I'm not worried about that because it's going to get routed out, but these three holes need filling. Those three holes need filling and this big chunk that's missing there also needs a repair. So I'm going to start sorting those out. Okay, so I made some little dowels with some scraps from the body. Um, just sharpen them in a pencil sharpener and I'm just going to glue them into these little holes. Thank you. 
And even these will be covered, but I'm still going to, to fill them in the same anyway. Which just leaves this monstrosity. And I think the best way to deal with this is if I just chop it out into a more regular shape and then I will fill that with a little lump of wood. I'm sure it'll be fine. just started to split out ever so slightly on that edge so I'm just going to get a little bit of super glue in that before we go any further. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of this is going to get cut away when I put the bevels onto this um, so it's not massively important that it's a, an absolutely flawless job at this stage. So now I'm just going to go about cutting a little patch of mahogany to go in there. So I've cut a little patch of wood it's still ever so slightly too big to go in there. So instead of sanding it down, I'm just going to use this little hammer and compress some of the fibres on the edges so that it will then fit. And then what will happen when I glue it in, the moisture from the glue will make those fibres expand and it will fill that gap really nicely. That's actually quite a nice tight fit now. Try and get it out. Come to your glue on this occasion. Bosh that in there. Clean the glue up. Leave it to dry. So next day, the glue's dried on this little block. So I'm just going to take it off with a, a flush trim saw. Now I'm just going to plane that smooth. So I've done a few bits off camera just to get this moving along a little bit. Um, I've drilled some holes through the main body template that locate the control pots and the output jack. I've transferred those to the body and drilled them right the way through to the back. That's going to give me a, a really good location for when I route out the control cavity. I've also transferred the centre line to the back of the body. I've also made a couple of additional templates, one for routing the control cavity and one for routing out for the control cavity cover. And that's what we're going to attempt to do next. So to start off with I'm going to locate the template for the control cavity route. I'm going to do it on the back of the body, not the front. Okay, so I'm simply going to, going to mark that out with a pencil. Next I'm going to take this to the drill press and I'm going to use a big force and a bit 
to just hog out as much of this waste as possible. So I've set the depth stop on the grill press to leave me plenty of meat on the inside of this hole. So I'm just going to start drilling away. So the bulk of the waste is out of the way now, um, I'm simply going to attach this template using masking tape and super glue and we'll get the router on it and get that cleaned up. So I'm just going to set this up on some bench cookies. I'm just going to use a small laminate trimmer to trim this out. So I've just had to change out the bit to get the depth I need. I'm just going to take it to the final pass now to leave 6mm between the bottom of the control cavity and the top of the guitar. Okay, moment of truth. Got to be happy with that, that's beautiful. Right, so the next step is to just put the relief in for the control cavity cover to sit into. So we'll use this template for that. Okay, same as the first time. Super glue and masking tape and off we pop. Okay, so I've swapped out a bit again. Um, the easiest way to set this up is just to place your cover material onto the template. Zero you out of it from there. And there we are, job done. Next job is to cut out the neck pocket. Um, my drawings are telling me it's 33 millimeters wide by 26 millimeters deep. So to do that, I've cut some little bits of MDF to make a template up with. The first one I've made, it's, it's just slightly under 33 millimeters. So it's about 32.8, but it's consistent right the way along its length. And I've also marked on a center line. So I'm gonna put that onto the center line of the guitar and fasten it down. And then I've cut two more bits that I can fasten next to it. And that will give me something to run my router in to cut out the pocket. But before I do that, I'm just gonna do what I did in the last, last cut out and just drill out most of the waste with a force and a bit. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I think that should be it. Get this template off. Okay, and there it is, there's the neck pocket done. 
Right, I'm going to call time on this one. I think I made some really good progress and I'm anxious that I don't want to make the video too long. It's been a couple of days now since I uploaded the first video and I've got to say I'm, I'm absolutely blown away with the response it's had, so thank you all for that. It really does mean a lot to me. The third instalment is going to follow on quite quickly from the second, so don't miss out. Subscribe, hit the bell icon and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.